Let's begin by creating a new Next.js application using npx. You can use pmpm, dlx, or any other tool. We'll accept all the defaults for our new Next.js application, and we'll give this a name of Next on Fly. Once the packages have installed, let's change directory and open this in our favorite code editor. No, it's not NeoVim. What? We can see this looks like a regular Next.js application directory with all of the files. And just like any other create next app, we'll remove everything inside of page.tsx. And because next includes Tailwind by default, here we can add a H1 to the page with some color. Using a link to the documentation in the description, you'll want to install the correct CLI for your operating system. Once it's installed, you can then sign up or log in if you have a Fly account. This will open a browser where you can confirm your authentication. Now into the root of our Next.js project, we can run Fly Launch. This will detect that we have a Next.js application and tell us what it's going to do. Here we can see it's going to detect the closest region in which to create a machine. And for me, that's London. We'll also decline changing any of this configuration because the defaults are pretty good. This will take a few moments to create that Docker image and deploy. And when it's done, we can see that Fly deploy this to the default region that it's selected previously. We can now see inside of our project that we have a fly.toml file, which contains configuration for fly and our application. We can also see that we have a Docker file that we don't need to change just yet. And we see that inside of our package JSON, we have a new dependency for that Docker file. And if we grab the URL from the terminal from our successful fly deployment, we can open this in our browser and see the text that we created instead of our Next.js app. And there we have it, a Next.js application deployed to fly in a few simple steps. Now this isn't a very interesting application. It just has hey h1 on the page. So let's improve this by adding my favorite database, Terso, and deploy this to fly with some environment variables. Let's begin by installing the libsql client. Once that's installed, we'll import create client from libsql slash client, and then we'll instantiate a new db const, passing our database URL and all token environment variables. For the purposes of this demo, let's create a table if it doesn't already exist, and then we'll insert into that table a user. Since the email is unique, this user will only be inserted once when we run this page. Now let's create a type for our user that defines the ID, name, and email fields. And now let's invoke libsql to execute a SQL statement to fetch all of our users. We'll assign the value here as result, and don't forget to update this default function to be exported as a async function. Now let's declare the const rows and call result.rows and then pass the type of array user. As an added bonus, let's print to the page the latency in which it takes to fetch users from our database. Note that this isn't a concrete performance benchmarking test, but it gives us some idea on how long it took to fetch data from our database that is in a same or different region in which our application and database are stored. And to do this, we can declare start time using the built-in performance.now method, and then record the end time after the database execution. Then to calculate the latency, we can just subtract start time from the end time. Now let's finish by listing the name of all of our different users in our database. And right now, this will only be one. Finally, we want to opt out of Next.js caching our fetch request to our database. So at the bottom of our page, let's export revalidate and we'll set this value to zero. Now create the file env.local. Inside of here, we'll assign our Terso database URL and the Terso database auth token environment variables. What I'm about to show you will work with any kind of database, but if you want to use Terso, make sure to head to docs.terso.tech and install the CLI. We'll begin by creating a database. Then we'll fetch the URL to our database using terso db show, passing the URL flag, we'll then update our .env local file to include that database URL, and then we'll create a new token for that database, and we'll pass that token to the .env.local file. We can use the fly CLI to import our environment variables from that local file. You'll want to make sure if you have development, staging, and production environment variables for different databases and tokens that you assign and set the correct variables but here we're just using the same variables for development and production. And because Next.js requires access to those environment variables during the build step, we'll need to configure our Docker file to mount those secrets. So here we'll use MPX Docker file, passing the flag mount secret for Terso database URL, and we'll do the same 
for the Terso database auth token. This will overwrite the existing Docker file, so if you have made any changes, you'll want to make sure that you keep those. Now, if we open the Docker file, we can see when we build our application that we mount those environment variables. Now, all that's left to do when we run fly deploy is pass along those build secrets. And once successful, we can open our application at the same URL as before. And now we can see a list of all of our users from our database, including the time it took to fetch from the database. You're probably wondering at this point that deploying to fly doesn't give me the advantage of running code close to my users or in a serverless environment so I can save from the costs of running a server. Well, one of the benefits of Fly is that it scales to zero. Fly also lets you replicate those machines in different regions and we'll learn how to do that using the Fly CLI. Using the Fly CLI, here we can list all of the regions for our app. And here we can see we have one region. Using the Fly scale command, we can increase the number of regions and pass it the regions in which we want to scale it to. He will pass Amsterdam and Boston. Now, when we run fly scale show, we can see a list of all of the regions in which that machine is located. You can also use the CLI to scale multiple machines in the same location. In another video, we'll learn how we can achieve a zero network latency with Terso's embedded replicas on fly.